Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we are going to be exploring together the upcoming Cancer New Moon on July 5th. And we will also look at the astrology, the galactic astrology, the star alignments, a little mini forecast for each of the 12 signs, as well as at the end of the video, we will look at and pull a Beyond Lemuria Oracle card for the highest guidance for all who are choosing to watch this video. So I thank you so very much for being together with me as we explore the magic and the mysteries and the energies of this Cancer New Moon together. Before we get into the astrology, I would like to invite you to the upcoming Distant Reiki Share on the Cancer New Moon. It is Friday, July 5th at 8 a.m. Hawaii time, so definitely adjust it to your time zone. See if it works for you. You are very much welcome to join. It's always a lovely sacred circle of soul family. We come together. We talk about the astrology for the next couple weeks, usually the astrology between the new moon and the full moon. We do a Reiki journey together, a channeled Reiki journey or an invocation, some kind of Reiki experience that's very specific to the new moon, to the galactic energies, to whatever is coming through cosmically in the moment. And there's some time usually to reflect on your new moon intention, some guided journaling, automatic writing. Often that's included, sometimes it's not, depends on the new moon. And at the end, we always share Reiki together. So whether you have Reiki training or not, whether you have astrology experience or not, you are welcome and you are very much invited and I hope to see you there. You can RSVP for free on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. The link will be below in the description for you. At the end of July, I'm very, very excited. I am teaching another Astrology Basics with Reiki class. And this class is called Befriend the Planets. It's all about the planets. So the sun, the moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. We are focusing on those planets. Yes, future classes will look at most likely asteroids, centaurs, dwarf planets, and there's so much to cover, but these are so basic. These are so fundamental. I will create a video talking more about this class, but it's great if you are a beginner or if you are an astrology enthusiast at any level and you wish to review the basics and the with Reiki part Really, we are doing healing work together with the astrology chart, with the planets. We all have challenges in our chart, tension, things that are just not that easy to work with, maybe transits that are more difficult. And we all also have gifts, talents, ease, flow, things that work really well, strengths, other transits that are working with us, progressions, other things that are happening in our chart that are co-creating our experience of reality that are feeling a lot easier and more magical and just to bring harmony, to bring balance, healing, empowerment, the revealing of all of that, and really an opportunity to befriend the planets, to cultivate that sense of authentic relationship with each of the planets as their own beings, their own consciousness, and also these inner aspects of you that are part of you and your connection to it all. So really coming into that sacred relationship and exploring that authentically 
for you. You can learn more about that as well on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com in the events tab. And the link for that will be in the description below this video as well. It's recorded also. So totally okay. If you can't join live, I realize this date and time is not going to suit everybody. That's why we always record the classes and the recordings are really valuable and can be repeated again and again. All right, so here we have our new moon in Cancer. Like I said, July 5th, 14 degrees Cancer, 23 minutes. If you're watching the video, you can see the screen. The sun and the moon are together here at the top of this particular chart in the sign of Cancer. This chart was drawn for my location in Hawaii, so it is using the houses as would be relevant for Hawaii, so we're not analyzing the houses necessarily, just the planets, the points, and the angles, the aspects between them. So Cancer, what's Cancer all about? Nurturing, nourishing, emotional security, safety, your well-being, your inner sense of your own inner world, your psychic connection, your intuition, the divine mother, home, family, food, your sanctuary, your nest. So this is a very inward time at an inward time, an inward sign at an inward time, the new moon is about planting a seed of intention going within. And with the Cancer moon, that is especially highlighted, that invitation to internally explore, go within, nourish yourself, nurture yourself, definitely engage in some self-care, some rest. Maybe you just want to be at home. It's a water sign. This is a wonderful time to connect with the water. The moon as a luminary is in its sign of rulership in Cancer. So this is a highly sensitive sign, a highly sensitive time. New moons are already like a very psychic, you know, there's there's darkness in the sky. There's just the light of the stars. You can't see the moon. So there's this connection beyond the veil. There's this connection deep within. And Cancer is also a less vital, physically vital sign. So really going easy, resting, this is a good one, especially there's something called the balsamic moon, which is the period just a day or two prior to the new moon to really be cozy, to really take some extra time and rest and tune in psychically. Maybe you can't rest that much, but you can take some moments to really go into your own meditation, go into your dreams, go into states of deep relaxation, go to the water, visit the water, and just kind of tune in to tune out, tune out to tune in, however that works for you. Also, sound healing could be really, really powerful at this time as well, engaging in practices that really nourish you. There is a lot going on here. Okay, this video is already going to be longer because we're going to look at the 12 signs. But one thing I will mention right off the bat here is this very dynamic grand square that's happening. And so interesting, the last video I came on, I was talking about a grand square with a Capricorn full moon. Well, friends and soul family, we have another grand square here that I wouldn't have seen if I hadn't drawn in something that I don't always draw in, but I'm often guided to draw in certain things into the chart, include them in the chart. So this new moon 
is square the nodal axis. This is an axis of destiny and evolution and soul growth and where we are meant to be finding balance in the signs of Aries and Libra. So the self, individuality, being a pioneer, going for it, acting, taking bold, decisive action, going our own way, being okay, being alone, frankly, being okay, doing it solo, being okay, being the only one doing it your way or, or thinking it your way or behaving in your way, finding your unique, authentic sense of self, and also your unique sense of pathfinding and wayfinding and way showing as you embody that example of what's right and true and good and authentic for you. So finding balance here with this Aries North Node and the Libra South Node, which is all about releasing the the people pleasing to other focus to too much concerned about what other people think, what other people feel, what other people need from you, what other people are involved in, in, you know, really like smoothing it out and peacekeeping and maybe even losing yourself in relationships going just from one relationship to the next one person to the next to where you're like, I don't even know, you know, who am I? Like, what do I need? You know, who? what is my clear sense of self? What is my purpose? Everything that's going on, it's just all about other people all the time. And, and maybe engaging in some codependency and those kinds of things. So really letting go of where we've given our power away, where we've just tried to make peace and it hasn't been like an authentic peace that there's even deeper, we can go deeper, we can feel deeper releases. And I'm getting this is also like this is ancestral. So this is like this lifetime, it's current, it's childhood, it's family of origin, it's other lifetimes as well. It's like the lineage you've incarnated in clearing out the physical ancestry, the DNA ancestry, but it's also that more that soul level deeper, even deeper penetration into the the letting go and clearing out at the the soul level DNA, that level of depth and, and cleaning that goes on. When there's something that's square the nodal axis, like this new moon is, we know ding, 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 this is important. Something very important is occurring. So of course, the ancestral healing being very, very important. Tuning into yourself. What do you need? Very, very important. Nurturing, establishing your own sense of emotional security and safety, feeling all the feels, okay? Feeling all the feels that need to be felt as you go your own way and forge your own path and say yes to your authentic self and having the courage to express more of your authentic self, more and more day by day, moment by moment, living in the present moment, not being so concerned about the past, but being in the present, looking to the future, but again and again, really returning to that present moment, not so much dwelling on childhood and past and the way things are. These can be the shadow sides of the cancer zodiac sign. So letting go of that, very, very important. We have, oh, another very big indicator of the letting go of that with what is this fourth point making up this grand square? It's none other than series. You see the series cliffed here at 14 degrees, 27 minutes. She is retrograde. Series is retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. Now, Ceres is in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and she is so large that she's actually considered a dwarf planet. So she's the largest object in the asteroid belt. She's not just an asteroid. She's actually been classified as a dwarf planet. There's evidence of water. She's also considered by Alan Clay and other astrologers as the higher octave of the moon. So we've got this new moon in rulership in the sign of cancer 
opposing Ceres in Capricorn, Ceres, the higher octave of the moon, so an even more elevated sense of nurturance, nourishment, abundance, harvest, wealth, prosperity. But Ceres has quite a story of abandonment, of loss, loss of her precious child, Persephone, who went to the underworld with Hades, with Pluto, Lord of the underworld, and stayed there and ate a pomegranate, was a, unable to return to the upper world except for half the year. And while her daughter Persephone was in the underworld series, was very, very sad. And as the goddess of the harvest and the abundance and the cycles, she actually, you know, the land was laid waste. The people did not have food because she was so sad. She was not engaging in those roles. And so when Persephone returned, we had the seasons, the time when Persephone was in the upper world with her mother. We have spring, we have summer, we have times of abundance. And then when she was in the underworld with Pluto, where she was queen of the underworld. So my sense is that Persephone was in her own sense of initiation by becoming queen, that the separation from her mother was in fact healthy and healthy for both herself and her mother after they got over the, the change and the transformation and, and what was required in that separation dynamic. So when Persephone was in the underworld. Ceres was quite sad and forlorn. And we have the seasons of fall and winter where there is not so much visible and apparent abundance unless you live in the tropics <laughs> and unless we go farther back into times before the Greeks and the Romans when the continents were different. We have civilizations like Lemuria and so on. So it's not to say it was always like that, but that is part of the series story. So we do have this sense of separation. We do have this sense of loss, of grief, of moving on from those painful abandonment wounds, letting go, releasing and healing them so that we really can come into this, this bold new path, this bold new trajectory that just feels so good. It feels free. It feels light. It feels exciting. The most exciting possibility you saying yes to the reality that you prefer in taking bold actions in alignment with the reality that you prefer. I am channeling here some of that Bashar wisdom that, that Bashar is often talking about really being an agent in a vessel, in a vehicle, taking those actions to create the reality that you prefer. This seems very, very potent here especially as we we just let go of the past. We let the past be the past, okay? And that goes for this lifetime, other lifetimes. And when we look at this galactically, we get even more of the story because the new moon is conjunct Sirius A star, the brightest star in the sky, a star of fame, of opportunity, of great glory of shining so so bright that it can burn so we need to be mindful of the the brightness the power the luminosity here of Sirius A and also open up to receive that light so that we can heal what needs to be healed reveal what needs to be revealed so that we are blessed on our path moving forward. So some of the galactic energies that are up for healing at this time, any kind of trauma, conditioning, programming, leftover wounds from soul experiences within Sirius A, within Sirius star system. So the Syrians were very involved in the development of the earth, the genetic projects, and really, they are ones that just like keep coming back to the earth. They're so, so committed. 
And as one of my Syrian fellow travelers says, we keep coming back because we love the food. We love to eat. Oh my goodness. When she said this, I was like, absolutely. Because cancer is the sign of nourishment and the food and, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, that kind of thing. Cancer is we love our food and serious star seeds. My goodness. The food on planet earth is really, really delicious. And yes, worth coming back to experience. Oh my goodness. That's too funny. So Syrians keep coming back on earth. There can be a sense of like needing to save humanity and the sense of long-term vision, long-term projects, investing so much into the earth and really wanting to make sure humanity goes down the right path, evolves in the way that it can evolve to reach its highest potential and bloom fully. So Sirius, very, very interesting opposing series which is aligned to vega so what are we letting go of perhaps some some of the wounding here having to do with serious the lower frequencies as well as some of the lower frequencies of vega vega a star of mysticism of insights in lyra constellation one of the original areas within the Milky Way galaxy where humanoid incarnations were birthed and began in the Vagan society, very much connected to Cancerian types of activities going within, knowing that spiritual connection, journeying inward, being very, very connected to the oneness still. And they went through their own process of being in touch with that, then forgetting it as they became so disciplined and so mental and so kind of like perfect with their practices that their practices ended up kind of separating them from that oneness. They became too elaborate. They became too distracting. And of course, they kept evolving. They kept evolving beyond that to where they were so connected, they were enlightened, they were highly evolved, and they were more balanced mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, having that balance of inner and spiritual and the oneness and also being able to balance more the feminine and the masculine energy here. So letting go here with series, any of those trauma wounds of separation, of discord, of any kind of intense dynamics, polarity dynamics between Sirius A, Sirius star system, and Vega star system, and the sense of even like the Vegans and the Lyrans having their homes taken away, needing to inhabit other planets, having that that wound of there is no safe place for me. I don't have a home feeling disconnected from that sense of safety and home within oneself, within one's body, within one's own authentic spiritual connection and community reality. So very, very powerful here. These are two stars that are extremely spiritual, extremely insightful, extremely powerful, very beautiful and supportive to tune into. And of course, very, very enlightened, higher consciousness, highly evolved, extraterrestrial Syrian beings and vegan beings that can be connected with you know, you can connect with the lower, absolutely. I always, in my practice, like to connect to the enlightened time streams and the enlightened eras of these beings because they can help heal any of the wounding and the shadow and the darker aspects of those same energetics of those same Syrian codes and the Lyran codes, the Vagan codes, and how they influence human reality now and like my reality now as an individuated soul consciousness. So really beautiful, really powerful. There can be a time and a remembrance and a connection to yourself as Syrian, yourself as Vagan. 
from the future, from the past, from the present, you know, as a parallel experience. So really open up and receive in these versions of you. There's a time to definitely be listening and receiving higher guidance, more about your path, where you are now, what steps you may need to take, what shifts in consciousness are most important for you at this time, and inviting in support as you engage consciously with that process, receiving that support that's available to you. Because as you can see in the galactic chart, we have many other star family members that are present that are available, different galactic aspects of your multidimensional self that are available and being highlighted at this time. So I'm just going to call out some of those. So the Lyra Ring Nebula, Sula Fat Star, Ain Star, and the Hyades. We have two of the royal stars here, Jupiter conjunct Aldebaran opposite Antares. I'm so blessed in Hawaii. I can see Antares in the night sky so easily, so visibly, this powerful warrior star. Aldebaran, another very powerful, very abundant connected to Archangel Michael and Uriel with Antares, Michael with Aldebaran. So the Archangels, very, very present with us. We have Uranus with Algol and Perseus really waking up the feminine Kundalini energy opposite Beta Centauri Hadar, awakening our sense of unconditional love, Centaurus constellation, very linked to Chiron, the healer, the very priestly, gifted, wise centaur being that is now immortal in the stars and somewhat immortal too in his centaur comet-like asteroid like form in his orbit out between Saturn and Uranus. So there's Centaurus constellation, and then there's this link to Chiron in myth, and then there's actually Chiron, another object that's out in orbit between Saturn and Uranus. Fascinating there. Sometimes things happen like that where we have constellations and then we have objects or we have multiple objects that are linked to a similar myth. So it can be kind of confusing so take what resonates leave the rest i hope i didn't just confuse you with all this neptune here neptune at the final degrees of pisces so at the time of this new moon neptune will have just stationed retrograde so saturn stations retrograde on june 29th neptune stations retrograde july 2nd so at the time of this new moon that's still part of the picture the Saturnian energy, very strong, the Neptunian energy, very strong, the Piscean energy, very strong. So pausing, this again is echoing what I was saying about this time to stop, drop and go in and go into meditation, shamanic journey, however you like to connect guided meditation, visualization, playing your sound bath instruments, playing music, being out in nature. Again, however you like to connect, that this is very much a moment where a lot of good letting go can happen with Neptune at this final degree in Pisces. And that cleansing can happen at the more spiritual level, but you may be guided to engage with this physically as well in certain attention to your diet and your health habits and drinking plenty of water and maybe taking herbs that you're feeling guided and called to or you're aware that certain herbs would be helpful for you. I know I always enjoy some of my soothing herbs at the end of the day and that's very, very helpful to me. I'm actually learning a whole lot more about all of that in medical astrology and herbal medicine, these kinds of things I find very fascinating, very much a part of this Neptune at the final degree of Pisces here because we're going to have a big activation 
of this end of Pisces really through February 2026, which is when Saturn and Neptune conjoin at zero Aries. And that is going to be, wow, huge. We'll definitely do some kind of class or gathering on that because that is, wow, such a big moment. So back to this moment, <laughs> time travel back to the present. Neptune at this final degree of Pisces is conjunct ski out star and Pegasus very connected to premonition and prophecy and the dreaming and psychic abilities and intuition. Yes, cleansing and detoxification and so on. And our enlightened unicorn friends opposite the super galactic center, very connected to an ancestral healing. So we're still seeing that pattern of ancestral healing very, very highlighted at this time and coming into a sense of what is right relationships to self, to others, to the divine, to the earth, to the water, to the land, to the plants, to the animals, to different groups and communities, to our galactic ancestors, galactic beings, to our spirit guides, to the planets, to the stars. There's so many different manifestations of right relationship. Pluto, conjoining a lad far star in, in Lyra and Altair star in Aquila. So we have two of the three galactic birds, very, very highlighted here. Keep rising above, keep rising above the crazy and seeing the big picture and the eyes locked on to the new paradigm and keeping focus to that and keep empowering that and knowing that any of the releasing, the cleansing, the grieving, the detoxification is just making space for that new reality that so many of us are really locked onto. We're already quantum entangled with that. And it's just like certain pieces are falling into place and certain shifts are ongoing as we experience time as these manifestations take place as the forms unfold. So we also have Spica and Arcturus coming through Chiron and also part of fortune when a part of fortune is calculated for the Pahoa Hawaii chart that I've drawn up here. But Chiron is really beaming us what I like to call the A-team of our spirit guides, the Arcturians and the Speakins, which are very connected to the Divine Feminine Mastery lineages. So again, Algol, Divine Feminine. We have Spica, very Divine Feminine. We have Venus opposite this Lyra Ring Nebula, very pure Divine Feminine coming through there. Venus, very comfortable in the sign of Cancer. And then we have this beautiful Arcturian group consciousness, highly evolved frequency, very similar to Reiki energy, energy healing, finding balance. So Chiron here is receiving some very beautiful healing energy, helping us to heal those wounds of individuation, our I amness and our apparent separation to self. So very, very supportive. One other thing I'll mention is that I drew in asteroid Reiki and asteroid Atlantis and found that both of them are pretty closely conjunct at the time of this new moon in the territory of the final degrees of Leo here. You see 28, 29 degrees Leo. This is also very close to our royal star Regulus, which is right around the early degrees of Virgo. So very powerful asteroid Reiki, asteroid Atlantis, conjunct Regulus, royal star. What does this mean? Well, more healing and revealing of those Atlantean memories, trauma wounds dissolving as they pertain to our ancestry as they pertain to our earth history, as they pertain to our galactic history, as they pertain to our individuated soul evolution and more of that group consciousness, collective earth humanity soul evolution. So we are really receiving a lot of healing here. And very interesting, 
you see they are square to Mars and Uranus, which are going to be meeting up July 15th. So I've already had some conversations with some people. The remainder of June and all of July, this is a time to be very in your body, very present, very grounded. This is like the spark plugs energy synchronistically. I need to replace the spark plugs in my vehicle. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is such a Mars Uranus energy. This is also like volcanic activity, earthquakes, earth changes, and so on. It can also be a more accident-prone energy, sudden accidents, unexpected things. So when you're moving about your reality, pay attention. When you're driving, be paying attention. Just in your day-to-day -day life, exercising a bit more presence, a bit more focus a bit more like dropped into your physical reality because if you're like me you're watching this video you can be pretty expanded most of the time and a little bit head in the clouds and that's great and we love to be like that but this is like a real reminder to be very present mindful embodied like hook into your feet you know <laughs> hook into your feet chakras hook into your earth star chakra ground and be really, really mindful. I know when I am like really mentally distracted, I'm like bumping into things. I'm like hitting the, the edge of the door, hitting the corner of the table with my hip. Gosh, how many times I've done that, my poor hip bones. Oh my goodness, how many of y'all can relate? So all of July really being mindful of that. You know, how does this relate here that this very dynamic, powerful kundalini energy that's coming together with the star Al Ghul. And in this square, it's like whatever we're healing and realizing and shifting here and even reawakening, because this can be a very powerful embodied kundalini awakening type of energy. I feel it's linking us to some of that power we may have lost or rejected or given away during more of the Atlantean epochs and the galactic dimension of it with Regulus, any of that, that revenge seeking or that military power, that unbalanced masculine energy that Regulus can sometimes be connected to in its more mundane expressions, because Royal Star Regulus as a star is very fanciful. It's very mystical. It's very fairy tale. It's like the land of all the magical creatures and all the magical plants and all the beautiful realities. This is like the essence of Regulus star. Very, very, very magical connection. Connection to the archangels, the galactic angels, the galactic archangels. And so inviting in some of that support, some of that, that connection, the revealing of that dimension of Regulus and the kinder, softer, more balanced dimensions of Atlantis, because not all of Atlantis was bad. There was some, there was a lot of light, there was a lot of power, there was a lot of magic. You know, there was misuse and abuse of that as well, and and certain changes that could not be, you know, stopped necessarily or controlled necessarily. So accessing a greater sense of peace of harmony of closure even around what occurred within soul experiences related to those aspects of history and with all of this take what resonates leave the rest this is what is just channeling through here but i i feel that this is quite a very powerful intuitive activation here there's a lot of deep past memories that can come up to cancer is very gifted cancer is linked to the hippocampus in the brain which is linked to our long-term memory so real long-term memory can certainly come up here and we may be guided to engage in certain rituals here mercury conjunct vesta in the sign of leo perhaps fire rituals water rituals 
and engaging with like holy fire energy, which is the Reiki energy that I love working with to bless and let go and remember the parts that need to be remembered and be integrated and let go and purify any of those parts and aspects and residues that need to be let go of, blessing them into the fire and allowing the fire to transmute those energies for us so that we no longer have to carry them. They no longer have to weigh us down and we can walk our authentic path forward into our next new reality that we prefer. All right, that was quite a lot about our new moon. I never know with the channeling. I'm like, what if nothing's going to come through? And then I talk for like however long I just talked for that, that seemed like it was a long time. So what we're going to do for the 12 signs, we're going to look at your sign. So your ascendant, you can watch for your rising sign, your sun sign, your moon sign. This will be based on your rising sign using the whole sign house system. So that's different than Placidus system, which is what I use normally to analyze the galactic charts. But for forecasts like this, the whole sign house system is very, very useful. So you can watch for rising sign, sun sign, moon sign. We're going to look at what house the new moon is falling in for you. So what area of your life you may be guided to set an intention in that life area. Now, it's not really strict like that because it's like whatever, com especially for a cancer new moon, it's like whatever intention authentically comes in for you, go with that. But you may see new beginnings within this particular life area. So we'll talk about that, which house is the new moon happening, and where is the nodal axis happening in your chart as well, giving you clues to kind of your overall sense of direction. So I'll try to proceed quickly through each of the signs as quickly as possible, and at the end we will look at the Beyond Lemuria card. So you can watch for just your signs and then skip to the end if you want that that would be a good way to navigate at this point. For Cancer and Cancer Rising, happy birthday, Cancer. So this new moon is occurring in your first house of self here, and we see conjunct Venus. So this is all about you planting a new seed of intention for who you are at the core of your being, how you want to express yourself you know, this would be a beautiful time to create an I am statement. I am and like whatever feels right for you creating some affirmations. I am love. I am freedom. I am home. I am safe. I am worthy. I am beautiful. I am supported by the earth and by all that is. These are some that are just coming through right here. So this new moon in square to the nodal axis, you have been working on this Aries North node in your 10th house. So your career, how do you cancer need to come out of your shell and express and share yourself with the world, share your gifts and talents with the world, share that sense of safety and home and nurturance and emotional security your gifts and talent, your psychic abilities. How how can you more publicly share those gifts and be of service and be be seen in your power that way? Balancing out this need to just be at home and be relaxed and be safe, be with the family, be connected to the earth. So this is a bit of that taking some bold action to be a little bit more seen, a little bit more public, and know that you are safe and protected. And that this can really benefit others. This can really change your relationships in a positive way. So be open to connecting in deeply with yourself, creating that sense of safety, 
and reflecting on in what ways are you ready to share that with others at this time. And it may be that some profound changes are happening in terms of your career, your job, your work, your public status, your reputation, as you love and value yourself more deeply and connect with yourself more deeply too and let go of any kind of ancestral wounding that may have been holding you back. For Leo and Leo rising, this new moon is occurring in your 12th house. So this is a wonderful time to do a shamanic journey, do a Reiki journey, come to the distant Reiki share, be in a meditative space, connect with the water, go be by the ocean or the river, really take time to rest, to sleep, to journal about your dreams, to write about your feelings, to really take take time to nurture yourself and engage in some very much needed self-care and relaxation. The nodal axis has been working with you to expand your mind, expand your horizons, perhaps engage in some travel, some spiritual pilgrimage, some courses of study that are maybe not as practical oriented, but like more big picture, more of metaphysical studies, higher education, higher mind studies, things that get you really, really excited. So there's this seeking of truth. There could be that you are sharing what you learned with others, you're teaching, you're sharing this information, you're putting it all together, you're collating, and you're seeing how all the pieces really fit together. And you're able to use this in a way that actually does practically support others that perhaps is changing in your day-to-day reality, in your health, your routines, your work, and how you are contributing vocationally being of practical service in this lifetime. So as you go deep within, take some rest, you may be surprised how inspired and invigorated you are in terms of your soul growth and really expanding into your next big idea, your next big horizon and what's possible for you moving forward in terms of your career and your sense of practical and spiritual service. So beautiful, beautiful new moon for you, Leo. For Virgo and Virgo rising, this new moon is occurring in your 11th house. So wonderful time to be in community where you feel safe, you feel supported, you feel like you can show up and be emotionally secure, where you can be held, where you can be loved, where you can be seen for just being you. This could be new beginnings in terms of relationships, friendships, communities, and sense of soul family and soul tribe. The nodal axis has you really working with wealth and with power, with self-love and your own self-worth in the second house, maybe overcoming fears of scarcity, scarcity type mindset, scarcity consciousness, you know, you have to do it all yourself and material security and leaning into, no, I can be taken care of a little bit more. I can expand my sense of spiritual values and really feel a sense of security and my own authentic spiritual connection and explore the darkness and explore invisible energies and explore esoteric topics and the mysteries of life and death and resurrection and spirit guides and communications beyond the veil. And this could be a time when finances have been very highlighted for you, your own money, the wealth and monies of others. So really having that working 
for you working with a sense of abundance and prosperity mindset here and letting go of any kind of wounds around risk-taking, around romance, having to do with your own children. If you have children or wounds from childhood, how your own self-expression has been blocked or inhibited in the past, making peace with that so that you feel more whole, more complete, more in touch with your soul family, and more in touch with the depths and the fullness of your authentic self-worth. So happy and blessed new moon to you, Virgo. For Libra and Libra rising, this new moon is occurring in your 10th house of work and career, your public reputation. There may be new beginnings and new desires, new ways of making money, new ways you are supporting others, new courses, new things you're wanting to teach, new jobs you're wanting to engage in, new ways you can be of service and bring value to others. You may be guided to work with others and explore certain business partnerships, relationships, co-creations, co collaborations with this north node in your seventh house and the south node in the first house. So you're finding balance between self and other in how to be independent, sovereign, and free in your relationships. So all one-on-one -on -one relationships and partnerships, including romantic, business, friendships, client work, and so on. So there could be an emphasis in helping others feel empowered and maybe some ideas about new ways you can do that, that really maybe is also drawing from some of the gifts of your childhood, the gifts of your ancestry, the gifts of your lineage, your own inner child's gifts and talents and this awakening of your intuition and letting go of any kind of childhood and family wounds that said, no, you can't do that. No, you can't be of service out in the world. No, you can't really help others in any way. You can't even help yourself. Well, that is simply not true, not the case. You've learned a lot. You've mastered a lot. You have a lot to give. And you can learn here and embody, be an embodied example of not losing yourself in relationship, but remaining really clear with good boundaries. So happy and blessed, beautiful new moon to you, Libra. For Scorpio and Scorpio rising, this new moon is occurring in your ninth house of travel and expanded horizons, metaphysical studies, higher mind studies. So there could be a new course you are taking, a new course you are teaching, new ways you are nourishing your mind and nourishing that sense of expansion. This could be a trip that you are taking, a trip that you are planning to take. Perhaps you're planning a, a trip that you're going to take six months from now or a few months from now and getting really excited about that. You can plant a seed of intention for a trip you want to take in the future, this would be a really wonderful time to do that. Or perhaps you are taking the trip now or starting the course now or engaging with a new discipline that really lights you up and gets you jazzed. So this Aries node in your sixth house and the south node in the 12th house is really asking you to balance your spiritual service that time alone in withdrawal, in deep meditation, balancing that out with your sense of tending your health, being of practical service, attending to your daily duties here, creating a routine, analyzing the details, whereas this 12th house is all about like being in the dream, being in the oneness, and there are no details. There's just wholeness and bliss here. So really finding balance between the spiritual and the very physical and practical and 
also very much on this quest for truth and letting go any limiting beliefs that are impacting the day-to-day function of your minds, of your communications, and of your mind. I'm not sure about that mind plural, but perhaps that is that is actually being channeled right now. So all the different minds and the places your mind may feel a bit scattered and letting go of those minds that are not authentic, that are not true for you, that are not empowering for you so that you can bring that sense of focus and clarity and knowingness of what's right for you and how you can serve and how you can share what you've learned with others and also absorbing more authentic belief systems that resonate with your own sense of inner truth. Happy and blessed new moon to you, Scorpio. For Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising, this new moon is occurring in your eighth house of invisible energy and shared resources, other people's money, the esoteric, the occult, all sorts of interesting topics here in the eighth house, the darkness, the shadow work, the energy work, the alchemy, the transformation, transmutation. Oh my goodness, so many things here in the eighth house. So this can be, it's a time of deep letting go for everybody, but you may find Sagittarius that this is very deep letting go that's happening and it's clearing out a lot of other people's stuff and karmic stuff. You don't necessarily have to know the details of this. This could be a lot of family of origin things and childhood things that you are just ready to be completely free of and revealing more of those gifts and talents and possibilities because your nodal axis here is pointing you in the direction of this fifth house of play and romance and creativity and entrepreneurship and really forging your own way of destiny and bliss and satisfaction and joy, sharing your light, your energy, your enthusiasm with others and taking a risk that feels right for you. Sagittarius, you're probably already pretty comfortable taking risks. You may be so comfortable that this is something that you're not aware that you really do well. So this may be very highlighted for you at this time that you're taking a risk as you let go of what no longer serves you and cultivate a deeper sense of your own value, your own power, your own sovereignty, your own self-love, cutting away anything that has been obscuring that truth and that reality of how very deeply valuable you are in your own sense of self and sovereignty. And there is a support group around you. There are people who want to learn from you. There are friends and new groups and soul family and soul tribe that you can connect with as you take those risks, as you embody more of your authentic self and aren't weighed down so much by all of this other people's stuff, that this can be alchemized into your greatest strengths and treasures at this time. So happy new moon to you, Sagittarius. For Capricorn and Capricorn rising, this new moon is occurring in your seventh house of one-to-one relationships. So this is a time where you could be meeting new people, you could be setting an intention about the new people you'd like to meet, what are the qualities that they have, what does that emotional safety and security feel like that you have with other people feeling safe in yourself so that when you meet others you have that sense of safety and security and kinship and in soul family being reflected back to you in your relationships. 
So very, very beautiful and powerful time to really be thinking about your one-on-one relationships, feeling into those feelings, all manner of one-on-one relationships, partnerships, client work, and finding balance here as you are being drawn into a deeper sense of security, your psychic gifts and talents, your inner world with the North Node in the fourth house, establishing home, roots, family, grounding in, landing somewhere, feeling safe, feeling like it's okay to engage in more of these domestic activities as Capricorn rising. You know, so much energy and focus is often placed on this 10th house being of service, having a career, helping others, being out in the world. But there is a draw down deeper into yourself at this time as you cut away and let go of and release any kind of parts of your personality and yourself that feel like they are projections, feel like they have to do with programming or conditioning or are just not you and that have been blocking you from that deeper sense of knowing yourself that these can be let go of so you feel more of that sense of safety and security in your own body, in your home space, in your presence on earth, and also in your relationships at this time and moving forward. Blessed new moon to you, Capricorn. For Aquarius and Aquarius rising, this new moon is occurring in your sixth house of health day-to-day routines, your practical service. It's also linked to small animals, aunts and uncles, co-workers. So you could be planting a seed of a new intention in any of those areas. It's a great time to intend around a new daily habit you wish to engage in, a health habit, or you may find an idea or an inspiration about how you can be of practical service to others in some way, perhaps new, adding something in to your own practice, whether this is for yourself or for others, perhaps it's both. As the nodal access has been inviting you into a deeper exploration of truth, of study, learning, sharing what you've learned with the North Node in Aries in your third house and the South Node in the ninth house. So taking some of that wisdom, those expanded horizons that you've been cultivating and sharing them with others, being a healing light for others, embodying the example of the kind of mental experience you wish others to have, embodying that that peace that balance, that sense of fearlessness and courage and letting go of any fears, any kinds of blocks to the mental environment you wish to cultivate, the kinds of communications you wish to have, the sort of information you wish to engage with and allow yourself to be a channel of as well. As Ceres is working within your 12th house, really going deeply into your unconscious, there may be certain dream images and messages that are coming through for you. So know that there's deep work happening in your meditations, your journeying, hypnosis, any of your very deep spiritual practices, energy healing work, as well as your dream time, that this subconscious process is very much engaging for you. And it's shifting your identification with truth, knowledge, learning your mental body, and the mental environment and communications and the sharing of knowledge and wisdom that are part of your soul's intention and growth at this time. Happy new moon to you, Aquarius. For Pisces and Pisces rising, this new moon is occurring in your fifth house of 
love and romance and entrepreneurship, children, creativity. So you may be guided to set an intention having to do with one of those topics. It could be as simple as inviting in greater experiences of fun and joy and play and the delight and creative inspiration of your inner child and nourishing your inner child, making sure your inner child feels very safe and very much creatively self-expressed at this time. The nodal axis has you cultivating a deeper sense of self-love, self-worth, value, financial security, material security with the North Node in your second house and the South Node in the eighth house letting go of these karmic burdens, letting go of other people's energies, perhaps loving yourself more deeply and weaving the spiritual, your spiritual knowledge and wisdom and mastery and all that you've been through in this lifetime and other lifetimes, weaving that into your day-to-day -day reality, your practicalities, understanding yourself better, as you connect more fully with your soul family series is working in your 11th house. So certain friendships and relationships and communities may no longer resonate with you. And you may find that you are finding others that you want to invest in and spend time with and are really nourishing and nurturing for your soul. So there can be a sense of balance here with your hopes and dreams and visions and where you want to invest your energy and feeling like, wow, I can really create that reality for myself. I let go of any kind of blocks and densities that have led me to believe otherwise. I can create the reality I prefer. I love myself. I'm worth it. I'm empowered. Let's do it. Happy and blessed new moon to you, Pisces. For Aries and Aries rising, this new moon is occurring in your fourth house of home and family, your roots, your ancestry. So you may be setting a new seed of intention, new beginnings within one of those life areas. This could be a wonderful time to just connect to more of who you truly are, connect to your inner child, your own needs, and really engage in quite a wealth and depth of self-care. Full permission to do that, full permission to really tune into your inner child. What does family mean to you? What does home mean to you? And to empower new cycles of what that means to you and what you prefer in those areas of your life. The North Node has been working in your first house of self, the South Node working in your seventh house of relationships. So you've really been in this dance of being okay, being alone, being in your own energy, going your own way, tuning into your own authentic self and expressing yourself fearlessly and courageously, being a little bit less focused on relationships and others, and perhaps having some of those relationships, partnerships and clients and so on fall away, upgrade, if you will, as you cultivate a deeper sense of self-love here and worth, and there may be changes here occurring as series is transiting your 10th house of your career and public reputation as you drop into more about what you need. This is also very parental, very ancestral here with fourth house often meaning father, 10th house mother, other astrologers flip it the other way. So a very deep time of maybe there aren't changes necessarily in your career, but there is a falling away of certain maternal inherited 
processes and traumas and heritage that you're needing to let go of, that you're needing to shed so that you have more space to be in the fullness of your power. It can also be more of the paternal lineage themes. For some of you, it will likely be both. Perhaps many of you, it will likely be both. And this can be occurring at such a deep level that you're not consciously aware of it. You may be aware of it. You may see echoes of it in your day-to-day -day reality, but it, it's really looking like beneath the surface that is occurring so that you have a deeper sense of sovereignty, a deeper sense of clarity and security within your own inner child, your own inner self and innermost world. So happy and blessed new moon to you, Aries. For Taurus and Taurus rising, this new moon is occurring in your third house of lower mind communications, early education, sibling, neighborhoods, your local environment, your community, kind of your day-to-day -day reality, short trips, short distance travels. So you may be planning or going on lots of trips. There may be lots of communications. There may be a re-envisioning of how you wish your mental environment and mental experience, day-to-day -day communications. What is the relationship you have to your own inner voice? Are there ways you can upgrade that? Perhaps some affirmations you would like to ingrain into your mental environment here a certain belief systems are dropping away indoctrinations programming conditioning and so on can be dropping away for you so you have a happier lighter brighter mental experience and way of expressing yourself any blocks to being able to express yourself being released at this time, an opportunity to engage in that way. With the North Node in the 12th house, how you may be doing that is through your spiritual practice, in your dream time, your meditations, however you like to connect spiritually in your alone time. So taking some time to rest and be easy and tune in. You know, maybe engage in some channeling, automatic writing, dream journaling. All of this can be really, really fruitful as you tune into your deeper spiritual self. The 12th house also has to do with large animals, the 6th house with small animals. So you may be engaging with the animal kingdom in some magical ways, finding balance between your spiritual service and your practical service as you clean out your mental body and you access more of not an externally imposed truth, but an internally derived truth that is coming from the deepest, truest, purest hearts of you and can be skillfully communicated through your subconscious, your unconscious, your dreams, your meditations, your spiritual experiences. So happy and blessed new moon to you, Taurus. For Gemini and Gemini rising, this new moon is occurring in your second house of your money, your resources, your finances, self-love, self-care, to a certain extent, your health, your physical body, and also your values, what you value. So this is a great time to really tap into abundance consciousness and let go of any way you felt disconnected from abundance consciousness and more of a scarcity mindset. This is an opportunity to tune into you and your gifts and your talents and your skills and your abilities and how you may want to generate and bring in and co-create a greater sense of wealth and prosperity and have your outer reality reflect more clearly back to you that which you value cutting away a series is working in your eighth house any kind of stories about 
what that should be or how that should look coming from the outside, coming from other people's energy. This is a time of greater self-sufficiency, self-love, self-worth, taking stock of how beautiful you are as an individual. And as you do so, this north node of the moon is working in your 11th house of friends and community and soul family and soul tribe, global networks. You may find yourself connecting more with the wider community and feeling that sense of closeness and that sense of your family of frequency more and more as you tune into yourself more rather than focusing on what other people are all about or what your kids need, what your lovers need here with the South Node of the Moon in the fifth house. Yes, listening to your inner child, making peace with your children and lovers and romances and all the different risks you may be taking. This is also a house of creativity, of entrepreneurship. So there may be creative projects that you are doing with a larger group and sharing with a larger community and quite a lot of healing can come through in this process as you tap into a greater sense of self-love and self-worth and abundance mindset it is going to be easier and easier to connect to more of those humanitarian visions and dreams and realities for the future and ways you can give and inspire others and share your gifts and talents and the wealth of knowledge and mastery and so much love and creative power that you can share with others. So happy and blessed new moon to you, Gemini. Our final slide here, if you've stayed this long and you've made it, you've watched to this point, thank you so much. You're truly a part of my soul family. When I asked what is the highest guidance card for all who are watching this video, this is the card that came forward. It's number 34, Life Force Energy. And what a beautiful card it is. I love all the colors and the dolphins, the volcano in the background, the crystals, all of the sacred geometries and the flowers and the plants. You could see even a dragonfly there as well as our dolphins, the, the sunlight, the mandala. There is just so much life force energy, the crystals too, all of the different quartz crystals. This is life force energy. This is power. This is mana. And this reminds me a lot of what I've seen in visions of Syrian world. So recall that the new moon is conjunct Sirius A star. And Sirius to me is very connected with Sirius star system connected with the dolphins, the sea creatures, the whales, the mermaids. She kind of looks like she might be a mermaid. We don't know for sure because we can't see her lower body. And really just so very beautiful, playful, joyful, present moment, abundance consciousness, like this is the garden of your own inner world. You can connect with this world and this level within yourself. And of course, there are places on this earth, in this planet that really remind us of the, the beauty and the abundance and the glory of planet earth, so filled with life force energy. So I'm going to read to you about the card and just take what resonates and leave the rest. Energy, mana, aina, the rainbow spectrum, bright white light, reiki, celebrating life, god force, optimal health, being vibrantly alive, thriving nature, conscious consumption, Eden, the body as a temple, bringing earth into balance, cell rejuvenation, the love of the land. What happens when we seek to maximize the life force energy in everything we do? Toward the completion of this oracle deck, I was called to visit Hawaii. 
I heard it is known to be the last remaining part of the lost continent of Lemuria. I went with an open mind and was sincerely blown away by the incredible level of life force energy radiated there. I am an avid traveler and seeker of high vibrational places, but had never experienced such potency of the magic, the main inspiration of my art in every cell of every bright green leaf. I could sense the songs of Lemuria in this pristine place. I discovered I had been dreaming of this place my whole life. The crystalline waterfalls, rainbow diffuse skies, exotic flowers, and opulent plant life was so present that you couldn't help but see a radiant aura around everything. Aina is a Hawaiian term for energy and sacred land. It seemed to me that mana and aina are one and the same. One day, when I was sitting on Red Sand Beach, I had a vision of an overlaying dimension that spanned our physical world. This overlay was the God force or life force in its purest and highest vibration. The vision presented an array of objects familiar to this physical plane from lower vibrational concrete processed chemicals and suffering imbued consumables to the higher biodynamic earthly offerings and the vibrant lands that surrounded me at that moment. The experience imprinted the depths of my being with the remembering that we can bring this beautiful blue planet back to its former glory, starting with our own temples and personal pieces of Eden. I realized that maximizing one's life force energy was the gateway to bridging heaven and earth. By aligning our choices with this higher frequency, we will naturally create more opportunities to ground this somehow forgotten light. When we know the joy of this life force within and around us and are vibrantly alive, we can't help but inspire others to choose the same. It is a time for celebration. Revel in the bliss of being alive. This is an incredibly healing card packed with luminous life force energy for optimal health and healing. It reminds you to seek joy and upliftment in everything you do as much as possible. Consider the foods you eat, the environments you spend your time in, the people in your life, and even the things you wear. Increase your awareness of their journey, how they came to be in your world, and their energetic resonance. Are they alive and vibrant? You may also be inspired to work with healing energies such as Reiki, or with the land, perhaps to grow vegetables. You are encouraged to joyously make your life a piece of Eden. As a result, you will shine with vitality. So I leave you with that. May this new moon be filled with life force energy. I would be so grateful to connect with you in some of my upcoming offerings and a Reiki session and an astrology reading. I offer a variety of readings and these are some of the classes I have coming up as well, the Reiki 1 and 2 training as well as our Astrology Basics with Reiki class. So I hope to see you at the Distant Reiki Share. Happy and blessed Cancer New Moon to you. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is, mahalo.